Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Fire Emblem? <laughs> no, of Xenoblade, Fire Emblem. of Xenoblade Chronicles. Last episode, we started off, oh, like, you, you started off the game. Yeah. And, so and yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit weird for yeah. him uh, for the time being, but well, we would just get better. So right now, you see like I'm doing, I'm just, whenever I'm just running around and not doing anything, I just constantly hold this up and I try to keep the camera like focused on whatever the hell I want, you see? Okay. This is the way that I usually move around the game, and if I just want, just want to talk to people, I just release button and again. Yeah. That's how I do it, basically. Alright. Let's go and do the next story stuff. We're all made of story stuff. Story stuff? Story stuff. I love it. Story stuff. <laughs> I fucking love it. Alright. Ooh. Hey, that's the... The Monado. That's the sword. Alright, Shulk. How are you? Dixon! Wait. When did you get back to Colony 9? That's, that's the guy. Mm -hmm. Just now. I see you've been busy. He's still alive. Looks like your Monado <laughs> research alive, has been going man. well. I made the right choice leaving you in charge. <laughs> your research notes really helped. So, you can activate it now then. Well, anyone can activate it. The problem is controlling it. Yeah, for everyone except him. Yes. If anyone other than Dunban were able to control the Monado, we could surpass any military force in the world. You think so? What are these hidden functions you mention? It's still only conjecture, but it's starting to look like the Monado might be something far more significant than just a weapon for defeating Mekon. I see. And the evidence to support your theory? It's the symbol that appears in the center when it's activated. What I know is, the central piece is made from multi-layered glass. The symbol mm -hmm. appears on the top layer, and each layer is constructed differently. So it's possible that other symbols could appear on different layers. Which means... The Monado might conceal even more power. Am I right? If we could just... unlock the Monado's power. Dunban! Dunban! Prioritize the most severely injured! Come on, get a move on! Dunban! That's right, Don't that's right. look like that. I haven't come yet. Ah, so this guy knew the guy that's It was the Monado. It was controlling me. Even so. It saved us. Saved our future. Next, it will be up to you. <gasps> Dunban. Well, I better get the supplies delivered to the defense force. I'll drop round the HQ and see how they're getting on. Okay then. I'll see you later. Shulk. You're spending too much time in the lab. Either that or rummaging for junk in the scrapyard. It ain't healthy for a kid your age. That's why you're always looking so pasty. You should get out, get some fresh air once in a while. All right, I'm off. <laughs> hmm. I'm still wondering what happened on that battlefield. Hmm. Do they explain or do they... Yes, kind of, I think. Okay. Yeah, it does have an explanation. But it's gonna take a while before we get there. Oh, I, see. I see. That's no problem. It's no problem. No! no. I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gold. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and there he is. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, he is alive. Well, he's, yeah, he said he didn't die. He said he wasn't gonna die. Are you awake yet? No. No, mommy. Oh, 
Is it time to eat already? You didn't have to bring it yourself. You could have just called me. Don't be silly. Do you want me to feed you? <laughs> Don't treat me like an invalid. I'm better than I was a year ago. Much better. Oh, I really thought I lost you back then. Yes, but now I'm almost well enough to handle the Monado again. Dumban, don't say that. The Meccan have gone now. Oh, why would you say that? I just mean I'm prepared. Sorry. Okay. More importantly, eat up before it gets cold. I made something really special today. Don't feel like you need to stay here then, Fiora. Go and make your next delivery. Huh? Well, I'm sure you'd like Shulk to try some while it's still hot. That's okay. Shulk has no sense of taste. He'll say it's delicious even if it's stone cold. <laughs> In which case, today he would actually mean it. Hmm, maybe. I'm fine, Fiora. Off you go. Okay. Dumban, thanks. I... I'm not finished yet. I have to be prepared to use the Monado again. So he basically lost the, the main use of his right arm. Hmm. He can still use it, but it's just really, really weak. You can also saw like all the burn patterns. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <That's not> that. <laughs> yeah, my arm, it just took so much damage. I can't repair it anymore. Even the blacksmiths won't repair my arm anymore. <laughs> All right, so um, you have uh, story quests, which yeah. are quests uh, with a red icon mm -hmm. and also the white uh, thingy magic around it. All right, uh, so now we're playing as Fiora <coughs> in Dumban's house. So remember that I called um, the character in yeah, in Crown Trigger Fiora? Trigger. That's yeah. after her. I don't know. Because she's blonde. <laughs> it's the only reason why. Hey, Fiora. Dixon. Looks like you're His in a hurry. Dixon. <laughs> Where are you off to? I just thought I'd take Shulk some food. I'm on my way to the lab. Shulk's not there right now. Really? I just sent him out to get some fresh air. You know where he'll have gone. Outlet Park. That's the one. Okay. Thanks, Dixon. All right, move towards the story quest icon, story quest icon. So you can see like in a far place, like over there on a cliff, oh. that's where the story quest is basically. So let's go and go over there. So uh, another thing about Xenoblade Chronicles, which I absolutely love is, if you can see it, you can go there. Oh. That's no kidding. Like almost every single place that you see, you can go to. So we can go to the sky? We can go to the bloody moon! Oh my god! So uh, I'm gonna go and grab these item orbs because I'm I'm actually addicted to collecting these things. But as you can see, I, I collect them and then just get random stuff from quests or whatever. So I just get them when I see them. Hey, that's a black kiwi. Yes, and a dawn hydrangea. What the hell is that? For that's me? a flower. And a hydrangea, I think, is a flower. I'm not sure. Maybe. I, don't really know. <laughs> I am not a botanist. <laughs> yeah, I am that, everything that but a botanist. And there we go, we completed one of the quests. Yeah. There we go, with collecting rabbit, rabbit diodes. Oh, so it just does it automatically, you don't have to go back nope. to the guy? Nope, nope, that's, 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 that's with the generic oh, quests. Okay. So I'll, do, I'll just go and show you right now. So when you go to the quest log, yeah, you have yeah, generic quests like uh, the monster quests, challenge yeah. quests, material quests, and search quests. Those are like the basic quests, if you complete them or if you uh, get the objective done, they are just done. Oh. While other quests, like the one, with the old lady in the beginning of the the column that I said like don't accept that one, that's like a more advanced quest where you have to actually go back to the people and give them their stuff. And there's actually a little bit of a story behind behind almost every single quest, except for most quests, not not these, these quests. Of so these are just basic things to get to get get XP, XP and money. Okay. All right, another moon flower. Now um, it depends on which place you are at, what time it is, what weather it is. 
Depends on which items you get. Oh. So some items you can only get in the day and the night. So that makes uh, that makes it kind of annoying when you don't know about, about it, that that happens. And then you're looking for a specific item, and it's like constantly during the night, and you're like, I don't get this item, why can't I find it? And you have to actually get it in the day, for instance. Oh. Or in a very specific area. Okay. But for that I have my good old guide over here to assist me on that. And also the wiki, of course, if I really can't find it. The wiki. The wiki. The Manado. It's the only sword that's effective against the Mekon armor. They say that before time began, it was wielded by the Bionis. The same Bionis that we all live on. It must have a secret. That's how Dunban was able to destroy so many Mekon. And why he lost the use of his right arm. If I can just unlock the secret of its power... Shulk! Fiora! Mm. This is great. It tastes so good. Really? It's amazing. Oh, Shulk. You say that every day. Not quite. Mm. It's always delicious. But today, it's amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I used some special herbs and spices today. So if you said it was just the same as usual, I'd know for sure you had no sense of taste. What? Oh, nothing. The breeze feels so good. Yeah. I'd forgotten what it feels like. I never thought it could be so quiet here. You're spending too much time with Ryan. You're getting used to all the noise he makes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so peaceful. You know, Shulk, I hope every day can be like this, always. Huh? The debris siren. Strange. There hasn't been much falling lately. Those are the anti -avenues. Okay. There might be more on the way. The anti-air batteries can't protect us out here. Let's get back to the lab. Okay. Hmm. But where is the the debris coming from? Um, I don't know. Actually, actually, we don't know. Okay. So communicate with other party members. Characters can shout at affinity uh, an affinity cry to another party member to encourage or assist them, depending on how the battle is going. For them. So, uh, when you're fighting and a certain character has like, fallen asleep or is dropped on the floor, or is dazed or whatever, yeah. you can get close to them and press B to help them back up. Okay. Also, sometimes when uh, when your character misses a lot of attacks, so when you are doing really good in a battle, your characters get fired up and they'll be able to like attack faster, do more damage, they're just going to be more in the feel of the battle. And otherwise, if you miss attacks or they constantly get blocked or something, the morale goes down. And then you can encourage mm -hmm. your party members to be like, hey, come on. Get, get your shit together, fight again. Because otherwise they will continue to miss. The lower their stuff gets, the worse they start to fight. Okay. And it can get really bad. So encourage and help them up. There we go. Okay. Uh, chatting to your friends in a heart to hearts. If the affinity between two party members is deep enough, they can have a heart to heart. Search the heart command. Uh, each one indicates a possible heart to heart. Wanna check out the heart to heart in Outlook Park for further information? See blah blah blah. Ah. You can now switch with the party leader. So I'm going to show this up. Alright, so we have the landmark for Arthur Park. I'm going to get Saturn and, and the other one because that's insane. And I need items. So I can go to the party members. There's a heart to heart in here. Yes. So I'm going to put Chuck in front because I like Chuck. So you can also take a look at all the items that they have, weapons and stuff. Right now we can't really do that much and I don't like doing stuff right now, but no, we'll get to it later. Alright, so I will, however, check out this heart to heart. 
Alright, heart to heart. Sunrise in the park. So, uh, I would like you to refrain from not looking at my freaking guide when I'm oh, doing yeah. heart to hearts. Because they are spoiler territory, basically. Alright, if we go all the way upwards to look for the first area, of course. All the way- man, this guy is gonna be insane to traverse. Uh, Ooh, it's... I am touching your deck with my cable. Oh my! Uh, oh. uh there you go. Okay. These things are my favorite things in the game, probably. View the details of heart of hearts. There we go, it doesn't matter. Alright. Hey, Shock. You remember that time when we watched the sunrise right here? It was when we were really young. Yeah, I remember we came because... So, uh, when it comes to heart to hearts, you usually have two choices. You either have a good choice or a bad choice. Okay. When you get the good choice, the affinity between your partner members will increase. When a bad mm -hmm. choice, better with a bad choice, it will decrease. Oh, okay. And at the end of every single heart to heart, you always get an increase in affinity between the partners. Mm -hmm. I'll explain the affinity after this. Okay. Uh, is it this one? Yep. You and Dunban got a big falling out. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. Really, it had nothing to do with you. But I still dragged you out and made you stay up all night. I'm glad we did it, even though it was only that one time. We talked for hours and hours about all our hopes and dreams. And then you fell asleep on my arm as we looked up to the stars. Oh no! What? What is it? Oh, Shulk. I have this terrible feeling I said something really embarrassing. Like I wanted to get married? Um, Shulk, you don't remember what I said back then? Uh, kind of. I can't quite put my finger on it. Hold on, I know I'll get it. Oh, er, uh, don't worry. Uh, no need to remember, forget I even brought it up. Anyway, that's the end of that conversation. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> okay, whatever you say, if you are. Yes, I think I pulled it off. He doesn't suspect a thing. I hope he remembers one day. But for now, it's just a bit too embarrassing. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, you have these little conversations between all the partners, and I... I like the daggers. She's yeah, she's, she, she uses the dual wielding daggers, which is really cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I will explain to you. I cannot... You know, I cannot look at this for now. I'm just gonna continue then. I'll have to explain the affinity stuff later on then. Infinity! Um, infinity dagger! Let's go! And if you press the 1 button, by the way, you instantly open up the map of the area that you're in. Um. Which is super handy. You don't have to go to the menu every single time. Uh, we need to go back to the weapon development lab, so I'm just gonna skip to after this one. I need to be even, even stronger. stronger. There we go. And Shook just learned new art. Let me go in. Okay, I cannot look at all of this stuff. Why is the game blocking everything for me? It's unfair. Uh, this quest is this a quest with a named NPC? NPC? No. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Have you uh, have you ever been to the uh, to the pool below Outlook Park at night? There's a monster called Lake Magdala Magdalena that appears there. I've seen it, I've always been eaten by it. It would mean a lot if you could eliminate it once and for all. Alright, there you go. Such courage! Take care, and make sure you don't get hurt. There we go. Isn't that your job? <laughs> you stupid bastard. Jump the stairs. Because, that's why. <laughs> Wait, I wanna know, can I talk to anybody? What is it? I'm gonna talk to her. I'm what do you hear? I don't I care what she says, but... Getting stronger. Ah, that's how we unlock the affinity shards. All right. So, uh, she just leveled up from an achievement. You can also get, of course, XP from uh, getting achievements. <laughs> but achievements are really just insane and not worth getting. You get them automatically anyway, so... Alright, say hello to the affinity chart. Hmm. So, you have this thing where you can see you have an affinity with a certain area. So when you do quests, your affinity becomes better. You basically become more popular in the area. And the more popular you are, the better trades you can get hmm. with other people, which is going to be handy later on when we need to get some difficult items. Uh, you can also zoom out, and you have this giant thing. Right now, I only have one person. But you can also take a look at all of the people that are living in certain districts are going to appear over here and their relationships with each other. Also, the time that they are active, but not the place where they are. They hmm. are going to say, like, location is Colony 9, and that's it. They won't say, like, the specific area, but they will tell you when they are active. Okay, that's... Kind of nice. So when you and then you have this little uh, diamond thing in the middle. Yeah. And then you can look at affinity between party members. So um, whenever you do two quests, whenever you help each other, whenever you see the heart things appear, you usually increase your affinity with somebody. Hmm. 
So it starts off with yellow, then it becomes green, then it becomes blue, then it becomes purple, and then it's pink to be the final one. Okay. The better your relationship is with each other, the better you fight with each other. Okay. And there's also a couple of other handy things. There we go. And that's it. Let's go into the development lab. Ryan? Ryan! What are you doing? Sh Shulk! Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... No! Brian! Goodness. Oh, Fiora, are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. Ah, uh, it's broken. What? What do you mean it's broken? Don't you care about me? I could have died. You're not hurt, are you? The Monado can't cut people. More importantly, what were you thinking, Ryan? Sorry, I, I came to ask a favor, but you weren't here. And I saw the Monado and... I know I'm here a lot, but even I need fresh air sometimes. Is your body still feeling numb? We have to be very careful with the Monado. It's not a toy. I know, man. I just wanted to touch it. Didn't know it would do that. Sorry. But is it true? The Monado really can't cut people. The pattern in that circle. Or maybe it's a symbol. I think it shows which power the Monado has at the moment. You think it's a symbol? Well, if I can find a way to increase the number of symbols, I should. I'm sure that's all very clever. But why were you more worried about a machine than me, Shulk? Well, I just... Oh boy. I just explained why. That's not the point! Uh, s sorry. Look at you, worthless without the Monado. Until I've scrapped each and every one of you! So, of course I want to get my revenge! Your blade, it did not cut deep enough. No! He just saw, like, everything happened while someone was using the sword, or... Shulk. Something else? Shulk. Um, what on Bionis happened there? Ryan. I'll explain. Fiora. Are you okay? Does it hurt? No. Ryan, when you held the Monado, did you see anything? You know, like a blue blade made of light came out. Same as just now. I don't mean that. A feeling like time had stopped. And then... Time had stopped. So... Was it only me who saw that? That sounds strange. Is it another Monado thing? Who knows? Anyway, no matter how good a sword it is, that's what happens when you hold it. Looks like Dunban really is the only one who can use it. I won't let my brother use it ever again. Not after what it did to him. Oh. Sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, the point is, I'm fine. To be honest, this has happened a few times before. I've been researching the Monado for a long time. Shulk, don't act as if this is nothing. Look, don't worry about it. Anyway, Ryan, what did you want to ask me about? Oh, yeah, uh, old Square Tash has gone and put me on punishment duty. Fancy tagging along? Punishment? punishment the Colonel was pretty angry today. Did he hit you? Well, whether he hit me is neither here nor there, really. Although, actually, he did end up hitting me. And that ain't all. He made me do a thousand squats and sit-ups. Whoa, nasty. Yeah. And now I have to go all the way to the Magmel ruins and back. 
So you have to go and collect the ether cylinders? That's the one. They're used to power the mobile artillery. Looks like the damage has been repaired. They can't move without the ether energy. And it seems like the fueling station's all out of stock. Is the mobile artillery that big machine that crashed in the residential district? Yeah, probably. You know your way around there, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with you. Yeah! Knew you would. Hold on. The Magmel ruins are in Tefra Cave, right? I heard that there's a male lizard nest there. I couldn't take it if anything happened to Shaw. He's delicate. Not like you, Ryan. What are you on about? I'll be fine. I can take care of myself. But... Okay, I got it. I'll make you a promise. Shulk won't even get a scratch. A promise doesn't mean much coming from you. <laughs> that one uh, stings. She don't trust me at all. Nah, she doesn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the interaction between between Ryan and, and Shulk is amazing. Alright, there we go. Uh, so we have... Characters arts can now be leveled up. Finally. Uh, guess kind of skills, I'll have to explain those. Alright, so, another thing. Um, so we've already checked out the map, of course. We have this stuff. We cannot do gem crafting quite yet, but we have the Collectopedia right here. So I'll just go and show this up right now. So, uh, you have all of these slots. I can fill them up with items that we got, like, for instance, Dance Apple and Black Kiwi. Then I complete the category from Fruit, and then I get a gem. An agility up gem. <laughs> agility? Goddamn adaptability. <laughs> I can do the same. I can just put everything in that I want to. I'm not gonna do this right now. Like, I'm not gonna fill in everything, but this is something I can do. Okay. One is never enough. You need to, like, it, the title that you get when you fill in the entirety of the Collectopedia is amazing. It's just like, you're a madman. <laughs> or something, it's just something pretty crazy. Alright, so, over here we finally have a menu that we can assign our arts with. Or our farts. Um, so, right here you can see what it does. Like, gather the ether, the ether, I mean, ether, it's gonna be difficult to say. Gather the ether in the air to restore HP of one party member. So we have light heal, which is an ad attribute of ether. That all that stuff doesn't matter. The important thing is the recovered HP and the cooldown. Okay. So it's gonna take 25 seconds after you used it before it gets. You can use it again. Okay. Um, in the time that we got leveled up, we uh, sure got two new arts. Yeah. Uh, one of them is stream edge. So when you see like a little thingy like that in the back, you have like the sword. Thing and then like the symbol behind it. Yeah. That means that you will attack it in a range like this in front of you. Ah. And you will attack like that. And the thing it also okay. does is it inflicts break. break. I'll have to explain that when I get into a battle, but it inflicts a debuff called break. So you won't do a single fuck fuck stuff no amount of time? No, uh, break is for instance when you're like, if you're like greedy fighting, you yeah. want to somehow break the enemy's defenses. Ah. So you break them. And then I can. I'm gonna go and switch to Ryan so for that. Take and then you attack. And then you have the green ones, so you can see it. For instance, like this. Now the red, red ones are to attack, red arts. Mm -hmm. The blue ones are to heal or do a buff of some kind. Um, and the pink ones are to inflict a break. Uh -huh. That's a really handy thing to like figure out where you need to be. Uh, the green ones are to topple your enemies. So topple. after you've break, uh, after you've broken your enemy, you can use this art to topple it. Then they fall on the ground and they lose all of their defense. So you'll be able to do a lot of damage in the moment that they're on the ground. And they won't be able so to move. basically, take okay. that card, put them on their backs, and then... And then the yes, and then you can use like really powerful attacks. So, uh, over here we have Rage. The ones that are orange are... What are they called again? Um, hmm, I don't know what they are called. Um, they are called Auras, I think. And they're basically self-buffs. Hmm. So, like, over here with Rage, you can get... Uh, let's see. That lowers your physical damage. Um, physical damage down, spike damage, attack power down. So the physical damage you do goes down. No, no, I'm sorry. The physical damage you take goes down by 25%. Um, your attack power goes down by 25%. Mm -hmm. And your, you get spike damage. So spike damage means that when an enemy attacks you, you do some damage back to them. So we do 60 spike damage when you use it. It has an effect time of 12 seconds. And it does have a cooldown of 60 seconds. Of a minute, so that's really long. Yeah. Uh, then we have hammer beat, which is the, a thing that uh, you see in the background, like that circle thing. Yeah. That means aggro, aggro drawing. Hmm. So he attack if he attacks an enemy with that, he will almost always get the aggro, or like more aggro towards him after using hmm. that attack. The same with Matant, which is talent art. You can use it to drag to drag uh, like all of the aggro from everybody around you. Hmm. 
So yeah, as you can see, Ryan is made to get the aggro. Bone upper. Uh, assault the enemy with a mighty punch. Um, I don't really know what this thing is. I think it's just a basic or pretty basic physical attack. Mm -hmm. Then we have Aura Burst. Available when Aura is active. So when you use an Aura like Rage, yeah. you would be able to use this attack to deal some damage to everybody around you. Mm -hmm. And if it hits, it also reduces the strength of enemies by 25%. Wait, and you can use all of those? Or? So you can use Rage? You know that it's gonna... But I don't know if you can somehow see the buff. Can you use like all of those or can you only use like three things? Or? What do you mean? Like the the abilities you have on, on that screen, can you use them all at the same time in battle? Or? Uh, all of the ones that are over, over there. So you can, you can equip eight arts. So uh -huh. I can press the C okay. button to reassign yeah. them, like I do right now. Hmm? Yeah. I can reassign them. I can also, like, later on when I get more arts than eight, there's gonna be, like, this entire list of arts. Yeah. And then I can put in, like, an art scheme that you like. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna put uh, this topple thing over here, just in case, so when, for instance, if you're, if you're playing as Ryan, and Shulk breaks, you can, like, instantly go over to that yeah, art yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and use it. So, down here, we have AP. Um, AP points. So if I press the A button, you have not enough AP. Wait, let's go over to him maybe. So as you can see, I have like a number next to the bars. Yeah. You have different levels that you can level these arts up. Whenever you level them up, they increase in damage and their cooldown lowers and all that jazz. They just become better. Uh, you can get AP by, uh, by discovering landmarks and also from battle. You just get AP in general. Okay. Then you can level up your arts to be better. And that's basically everything when it comes to arts. So yeah, um, whenever we get a new art, I just want to take a look if it's actually something that I want to use. So over here, whew, the skill trees. So uh, you have different kind of skill trees. Uh, they have a basic trait. In prioritize this trait will improve walk rate. So I can, for, for instance, switch to this one. And then I would improve ether, ether damage mm. in general. And, in, and over here, agility. So this one would increase walk rate, for instance. You already have, already have one thing. Um, if you want to upgrade or... Uh, when you go around, so yeah, both I, I, uh, I have this one equipped, Integrity. It's really mm -hmm. difficult to explain all this stuff, by the way, in English in any case. So you can equip Integrity or any of these skill trees. And mm -hmm. then when you go around the world, you get SP. From gather, getting landmarks and secret places and all that, so you get SP. Yeah. And then, for this one, if you, for instance, need like 700 points of SP, and then you would be able to unlock this thing, which will... Uh, well, more HP is restored when reviving a party member, for instance. It's like little things that that uh, that will help you during battle or whatever. So if stuff like successfully complete quest to mark more XP, boost physical defense and ether defense, and increases chain attack damage and stuff. Uh, what, what do you want to do? Want to increase like the block rate or the defenses, ether damage or agility? Mm. Maybe just stick with block rate for now because okay. we have that one thing unlocked. All right. Um, well, the thing the thing that we unlocked is being able to uh, to equip medium armor. Ah. So you have light armor, uh, medium armor, and heavy armor. Okay. And you need special skills to be able to wear those. Uh, now we have with Ryan we have the same thing. It's like strained up. Here it gets uh, automatically, mm -hmm. and he also has the medium equip stuff. Okay. So if I, for instance, were to switch to this one and get the first thing over here, I would be able to equip heavy equipment. Uh -huh. You see, like, it's, just, it's just little stuff like this, but right now, what do we want to do? We want to improve strength, agility, or critical hit rate? Mm, maybe critical hit rate. Okay, so after like 300 points of SP, we'll be able to unlock the heavy weight uh, things. So you can equip heavy armor if you want to. Mm. And then you get all of this other stuff, but I don't really tend to focus on the specific, like, like being like like choosing the best skill tree or whatever. I just equip one and I let them fill up because after you have unlocked all of these things, yeah, you can do some other stuff with it. But I'll have to explain it later. Okay. Okay. So that's everything when it comes to arts and skill trees. That's the heavy one. Um, I think I've explained basically everything right now, aside from one more mechanic that's gonna appear later on. That's the wrong way. <laughs> Right, right, I'm gonna go over to one specific area, and then we, uh... Hey, there, Fiora. Have you forgotten anything? Tefra Cave is dangerous, right? You have to be prepared. Alright. Uh, we're gonna go over to the entrance. Oh, uh, let me go and just skip around because it's way too, way too far away. Um, I will go over... We need to go over here somewhere, I think, yeah. 
I will just walk over there. Because right now Fiora is away from us. Yeah. And if I go over to that area... Um, well, yeah. Spoiler, spoiler. But it doesn't really matter too much. Fiora will join you again. Over mm -hmm. that place. Yeah. And when the entire party is... Uh, uh, is there and you basically have free reigns of the game from that point onward um, I want to start doing the quest next episode we can go and do some quests sure that way you can also get used to the combat because we're gonna do a lot of combat next episode and exploring some stuff uh, let's see so we have little fangs uh, something else about this thing so uh, when it comes to this window you can for instance hold the Z button and then press left and right to switch between targets yeah uh, this one just has, has the gray stuff this means that this is going to be an enemy that you're just going to be normal against when fighting. They're not going to be easy, they're just going to be normal. And that's it, they don't do anything special. These enemies with the dots underneath them means that when you are fighting around them, they will... <coughs> uh, bless you. They will um, also join in the, on the fight. Ah, uh, okay. I think in any case. It's something like that. Uh, let's see, is there any other thing? That, like over here is a blue one, and that means that the enemy is going to be really easy. Blue chains. Let's see. Um, once again, uh, there are different enemies around at night than they are at day. Also. Okay. It's a moon flower. Do, do, do. It's a moon. A moon. All right, antles for just little spider things. They're big ants. Look at this. Look at these guys. Holy shit. They're pretty freaking sharp. <laughs> ants. I don't want. They look like. Don't want want them to uh, to bite them, bite you in the in the yes. special place. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Just but bite in your freaking ankle. Like th those claws are like this, so if they like grab you in the freaking leg, yeah, that would. That would hurt. That would be bad. That would hurt a lot. That would do quite a lot of damage. <laughs> so right now we aren't really uh, encountering many enemies that like attack you. Next episode, I think we'll be able to see some enemies that will be able to attack you. So right now I'm just constantly pressing the C button looking around with the camera. And I'm also when I'm like when I see a lot of enemies around me, I just or when I'm in a new area, I just tend to like item back there. hold yeah, I tend to just hold the Z button and then switch between the targets to see if any of them are gonna be able to attack me. When they're gonna be able to attack you they're gonna have like an eye icon on their thing. Which means that when they see you they will attack you. <laughs> if they are higher level than you or if they are with the grey window, if they have the blue window they will attack because they are too scared of you i think in any case it's either that or they need to be even lower than the blue window which is like transparent i think all right a strong dandelion a dandelion <laughs> also the entire ca uh, voice cast of the game is uh, british okay. or something around that area you forgot something you will be needing the transport cases, right? Fiora! <gasps> ah! I'm coming along as well. Uh. I'd feel better going with you boys than sitting at home worrying about you. So, let's get moving. Get a move on. <sighs> I knew she didn't trust me. Looks like it. And there we go, we have a full party right now. You can only have three people. The party gauge has, has been added. This gauge shows the party's morale. Uh, the gauge increases when a bonus effect or critical hit occurs. Hmm. So now you get bonus damage when you use an art at the opportune moment. And whenever you get a critical hit, the gauge will close. Okay. Press B near an incapacitated party member to revive them. So, in other games you would, for instance, have potions and healing items and all that jazz. Yeah. In this game you have no healing items or no items to use in battle in general. So when you're party gauge, you have like three bars over there that mm -hmm. you can see. When one of them is full, when you want to revive somebody, which you do with me, but of course, when you want to revive somebody, you will use up one of those chunks. Ah. And they will not be at full health, but they will just be there. So when you also when you want to heal in a battle, you o you can only heal with arts. Okay. So there's no healing items, and I really like that. I really like a game that doesn't use f flipping items during battle because I find it so annoying. Yeah. So when there are three blocks in a party gauge, the party is linked by a blue chain, uh, by by blue chain, by blue line, and you can perform a chain attack. Move the cursor to the talent art icon and use the uh, D-pad up or down to select chain attack. Hmm. Uh, where to go and find story memos? I don't care about that. All right, let me go and get these quests. I'm gonna go into a battle yes. to show you a couple of things, and then we're gonna stop. Okay.
Going into the cave, can you kill a willow bunny for me? They attack in packs, so uh, so they can make quite a quite a nuisance. <laughs> Cheers for that, uh, for taking that on. I'll be glad to see the Tefra cave get uh, even a little bit, get even a little bit, get, get even a little bit sicker. If you're, if you're heading in, this, uh, can you take care of a couple of singing rocks? They hang around in front of the ruins, giving us uh, no end travel. Peace. Thanks for that. Make sure you be careful. I don't want to see you get hurt. Yes. Seeing as you're here, can you do one more thing for me? <laughs> want you to try and kill some metal lizards. The path from Magnum Ruins is crawling with things. Uh, us in the defense wars are having to tiptoe our way past. <laughs> mm, yes. You're really a brave one. Remember when you're, uh, you're doing this for everyone in the defense force. <laughs> Will I get a special bodyguard, mayhaps? So we have another heart to heart. You can check them out. And then you can see, like, between Shulk and Rhyme, but at any time, out of the day. But you don't have the required affinity between them. So the reason why I wanted to go all this way before doing any of the quests is because I want the entire party to be together so that we can start building affinities as early as we can. Okay. So whenever you do a quest, of course, and export areas, your affinity between party increases. Which means that if I, for instance, went through this entire area and did the quest when they became available, I would only have a really good relationship between Ryan and Shulk, but Fjord would be left out. It, this is something handy to do in the early game, or just to start doing as early as you can, because otherwise you'll have to do a metric crap and a farming later on in the game. It's not too bad, but it's really annoying to do in the end game. Alright, I'm gonna go and look for an enemy to beat up, and I'll go and show you some stuff. So, we have our good old bar down here. Instead of starting a battle, you can also start by using art. So you, you can just surprise an enemy by doing a backstab, for instance. Over here! You can go on left and right to use your art, of course. Mm -hmm. You can press upwards, where you can switch to your talent art if you want to use that instantly. You can switch to this, which is a lure attack. You, we cannot use it quite yet. You can use it to like throw a rock at them from a far away place if you want. One important rule about battling in this game, you don't want to fight a lot of enemies, because you will just get wrecked. So you can just press this to lure one enemy from a whole group to you, and slowly take care of that group if it's, if it's in your way. And when you are inside a battle, you can also use this to switch to either a chain attack. Let me go and show you. Oops. So you can switch to the chain attack over here if you have full, if you need full. And you can also press this to run. You have to press up and down with your uh, with your uh, talent bar to so be able to find some. Alright, I'm gonna break this guy. Go. If I'm lucky. Uh, Ryan might be able to... Uh, <laughs> the thing is, it's been such a long time since I've played the game to the point that I'm actually kind of confused myself when I start battling. There we go, like, Fjord's thing became red, and then I feel like, holy crap, I have to heal her. When it becomes red, the character is usually pretty low on health, so I just tend to instantly try to heal them. There we go! And there we go, we just, we just finished the quest by, by killing some random stuff. Nice job. There we go. Let's press on and on and on. Hmm. Alright. Uh, I think that's just about everything, really. Stiff hairs. <laughs> Y'all have them stiff hairs. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the gist of it. You're not gonna, probably not going to be able to remember a lot of this stuff. You can also switch to whatever party member you want. Whenever in, in the lead, so we, uh, right now I really like playing a Shulk. I, I personally really like playing a Shulk, but you can also play with Ryan or with Fiora if you want to. We haven't looked at Fiora's uh, arts quite yet, so we have Power Smash, which does extra damage from behind, of course. Uh, Screw Edge, which in, uh, which inflicts Break on the enemy, once again. And then we have a new one, Hidden Thorn. So, uh, we ha you have a certain way of getting debuffs on the enemy, so you can start with a Break, then you topple them. Then you can also daze them after, and that's the yellow ones. The yellow ones inflict daze. Daze doesn't last long, but it stops the enemy from doing everything. Like, basically, it totally resets the area of the enemy. So when an enemy is like, getting ready for a really, really big attack, you can use daze or topple. Actually, actually, daze to totally get rid of the attack that they were going to use, and topple to like stall it for a second. Okay. Okay. There we go. Um, she also has her own things, of course, that we're going to take a look. Uh, there we go. Uh, we have Courage, Daring, and ZLC. So these are all like character traits that they have. So like he has Humanity, Integrity, and Intuition. He has Enthusiasm, Spirit, and Diligence. And she has Daring, Courage, and Zeal. <laughs> the magical kingdom of Zeal. <laughs> Not that place from uh, Crown Trigger? Like the flying Skyland place? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite places. 
All right, so prioritizing this trait will improve critical hit rates, uh, strength, and max mechy. Mm, max mechy. All right, and there we go. I think that should be it for this episode. Next episode, we're gonna do a metric buttload of freaking uh, questing. So if you are here for the story, um, I think I'm gonna also just say it in the title, saying like, "Hey, this is gonna be side questing mainly because there's gonna be a lot of episodes of just us side questing." Oh, okay. All right, we got another episode. Also, no, something no, else, no, maybe, no, before no, we no, finish no, off, I have one more thing to say. When you see the meter over there, the party gauge, whenever yeah. you're out of a battle, the party gauge will surely, but yeah, will surely see. decline. Because otherwise, it would be unfair to fill up the party gauge and just be ready for it, be ready with a chain attack to instantly va vaporize somebody. Which, yeah, it's on, it's only something for battle. It's, it's like you said, it's like the morale from doing the battle. Yeah, the morale at your character. All right, you can have. Yeah. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like if you didn't hit the dislike button, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye. Yeah,